Now, if you're just tuning in, we're discussing work-life balance. Now, remember, you can join this conversation. Tweet at us at Plus TV Africa or at Waste Your Africa One with the hashtag Waste, or you send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081-803-84663. We have a comment from Semi Okonlawo. He says, if at all we had all fail to note the need for that balance COVID has doused on all of us <laughs> now the need to be conscious and realize that life can indeed be easier than we had taken it to be so you can now reduce hours of work and give those hours you have cut from work and add it to family and for yourself for me work now starts from 10 a.m and by 4 p.m i close the computer and the rest is looking for things that can help me relax relax my brain such as watching ways. Oh, really? Lovely. Thank <laughs> right, you. Thank you, Samuel. <laughs> That's really nice. So somebody is saying, um, good evening. I am enjoying Modupe. She's on point. Great show. I oh, that's from Ade in the UK. <laughs> thank you, Ade. All right, so um, Modupe, if you can hear me. I, I think Timmy had a question for you, but quickly, let me also strike another balance. Right? Um, if Modupe, are you there? Okay, awesome. Modupe, I want to also strike another balance. Sanzi mentioned single ladies. Now, singles they are, generally. Uh, singles generally. There are stay at home people. So I would say either father or mother, so that we don't keep it to one gender. Mm -hmm. There are people that stay at home. They are not working, they are just house parents, right? While the other partner goes out to work, you know? So sometimes it seems overwhelming because they have to do everything, especially the ones that are married. They have to take care of the children and all of that. So how do they also create a balance in their life? Because sometimes we disregard them to think that they're not doing a work. Raising oh, a child. You. Oh, can you hear me now? Yeah, the audio is... Okay, so can you hear yeah, me? I think the audio just went off. <laughs> okay, so we'll try to connect the audio if they can hear me. Um, because I, I also want us to create that balance, right? Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes stay-at-home moms or stay-at-home parents we think, oh, they are not working. So because they are not working, yeah. uh, they don't have they don't have any business with work life balance, and that's a big lie. That so that's true. where you now get some of them, you know, thinking of committing suicide or mm -hmm. having postpartum depression. I think depression. our society is such that we, we refuse to accept that we need help. So these house parents are overworking themselves, and they just like it's about the family. Let me okay. get my family together, mm -hmm. and then we also see such things happening in churches where the pastors are overly given to you know um working in church and all that and you see the average pastor's child they're like mm. you know what i don't like my father what my father or what my mm. parents are doing so i rebel. feel exactly they turn to rebels you know, okay so i think uh um, modupe can you hear me yes i can now. okay so i said before i come to tammy right i also wanted to strike another balance we talked about mm -hmm. singles right i also want to talk about stay at home parents so either stay at home mom or stay at home dad we tend to overlook them to think that they are not working and they don't need this work-life balance that we're talking about. So how can we also help them and strike that balance for them? You, you, you see, I mean, I, I think um, I, I, I did mention something earlier about the fact that, you know, right now, a, a, a sparkling house, a sparkling clean house is not a priority. Mm. I mean, for, for me or anybody, it shouldn't be right mm -hmm. why because you don't even have visitors you're entertaining to start with and oftentimes what happens is you know there's that pressure of wanting to appear all together you know my house is tidy i get the meals ready when needed and all that you know and you just want to be that perfect spouse or that perfect person you know people no this is the time where people need to really pick their battles you know what can i do right now because like you said you know stay at home parents or yes yeah, stay at home parents you know you have the housework to, to to battle with maybe you have a a gig you're even doing maybe you you yes you stay at home but then you have an online business you're driving and then you have homeschooling or some other things or commitments to drive at this time you know it, it's still the same thing it's still the you know the question of what is important and urgent right now mm. what gets us overwhelmed is trying to do many things at the same time trying to live up to some standard or definition of success 
that is so, so peculiar or unique to people. But, you know, if Timmy tells me that, you know, I wake up 6 a.m. every day, I fix my children's lunch and dinner, you know, I do this, I do that, it just almost all of a sudden feels like, oh, yeah, that's what a normal mom should do. But that's not <laughs> it, right? That's not it. My normal is different from your normal. Absolutely. I need to find my reality and mm. stick with it. Let me quickly give you a gist, right? I remember when I had my twins like nine years ago and I did my normal 12 weeks maternity leave and then I showed up at work. In fact, I think I went to work a week before. And then people were like, oh my God, why, why didn't you take some extra time? Do you your first time mom and you have twins. If I were you, I would take some time more, you know, to stay with my kids. And I'm like, my kids can't even call me mom yet. They don't even know me. They can smell me. They can hear me. Well, they can't have that interaction. So I'm just going to stay at home and be watching babies sleeping. No, that's not me. But you know what? Now when they are, they are now a bit older, I can actually consider a career break to focus on their transition from childhood to puberty. Hmm. And because that is what is important to me. Hmm. Do not live your life based on the standards of others. Mm. Define what is important to you and only you know what is important. Mm. Because when you wake up, guess what? Every day is not even the same. Mm. So how do you even say that, you know, this is exactly how it should be? Mm. You wake up now and then you do what is in front of you. You know, there's a book called Eat That Frog. Mm -hmm. You don't have to eat many frogs. Mm -hmm. Just find that one that thing. One frog. That is very good. important to one. <laughs> All right, yeah. so tell me, tell me over to you. Okay, thank you. So, I mean, well done, Dupe. I'm, I'm enjoying this conversation. So we've established that um, compounding stress of, you know, never ending work days and all of that. It affects personal relationships. It affects the health and the overall happiness. I like that we've established that, right? So on the one hand, we should be imploring employers to kind of encourage a healthy work-life balance for employees, right? But where do we now draw that balance between, you know, practicing work-life balance as an employee and being outrightly irresponsible? So I'll give you an example. I've seen a situation whereby we had an emergency, you know, what, 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 what you would call a business exigency on like a Sunday, you know, there's, there's an important presentation. The next day, Monday, it's probably, you know, that meeting with that high profile client or a meeting with the regulator or a board meeting or something. And there's a colleague that has a very crucial input. But because it's a Sunday, they just shut down completely. Hmm. They unplug from the metrics, turn off their phones and say, oh, I'm trying to balance you know, and I'm like, this doesn't happen every day. So where is that, you know, distinct balance between irresponsible territory and me saying I need to balance things? Hmm. Tammy, I mean, what you just shared, you know, it is clear that this is someone who, you know, doesn't have that sense of commitment or dedication mm -hmm. to the organization's Absolutely. objectives. That's been irresponsible. Mm -hmm. You know, you mm -hmm. made a statement, which is that it doesn't happen every day. It's not every time your no, Sunday no. gets interrupted, right? So there are times you're able to say, you know what? Yes, I would, I mean, I would like to spend the evening with my family, but then duty calls, right? Let me just pay attention to this. And, you know, it, it, it's that smartness of being able to identify the thin lines between, okay, work and then non-work activities and being able to make the right switch. So I totally agree with you. Um, being able to cut some slack on work you know, weekends, when it doesn't happen often, yes, please don't be irresponsible. You should be seen as a team player. You know, there was something you mentioned earlier about, you know, two extremes can actually exist where I'm trying not to look like irresponsible. And so I'm saying yes to everything. You know, you want me and then I'm jumping every time. And then there's the other part where I don't want you to think I'm that available or I don't want you to eat mm. into my personal space. And then I just block you out. Mm. Like people turning off their phones when it, once it's weekend. Mm -hmm. That is not work-life balance. That is rendering yourself relevant to the business, okay? Mm -hmm. Because if you were or your own business owner, uh -huh. if a client or a customer reaches out to you on a weekend, you most likely are going to pick that call. So why don't you put your shoes in the, in the, in the put yourself in the shoes of your employer and say, okay, you know what? For them to reach out to me, it's most likely important. 
I do know they are irresponsible employers. Absolutely. Okay, some, mm-hmm. some, some absolutely. Some, absolutely. So, <laughs> so we're okay. talking about the normal situation here, right? So yeah. when it happens, please give yourself. It doesn't hurt to serve, absolutely. and that's what distinguishes you from a high-performing employee to the one that's Mediocre. on his way out or okay. way out. So, Modupa, you touched on something very, very profound: entrepreneurs. Right? We hardly sleep. 2 a.m., I'm working. 1 a.m., I'm working. 6 a.m., I'm working. We hardly find that balance. Now, every day I look at my husband, I'm wondering, okay, there is absolutely no break. Now, he wants to be going from Sunday to Sunday. <laughs> because it's his business. It is his, it is his baby. He's trying to grow that business. But even amidst that, where do you strike the balance as, a, as an entrepreneur? Because you can't go to sleep as an you can't switch off your phone. It's your company. It is. And you must make it work. Mm-hmm. So, so this is what I would say. So I, I, I can imagine, I mean, you know, <laughs> I can imagine getting calls at a certain time or maybe messages and then you're still working on your business and all that. I think, you know, having a clear definition of success will help. Mm. What is success for me as an entrepreneur? Is it the amount of money I make or the amount of money I make in good health? Mm. If you're able to put things in perspective, I think we'll be able to define things. So um, I will not um, castigate an employer who, for instance, you know, um, works better or works best at night and is, sleeps during the day or catches up on his rest. You know, I would say you need to pay attention to your health. You know, I know the doctors, you know, have said to us six to eight hours, you know, is advised, yeah. you know, for us to rest. I, the least you can do is six hours, really, or just find what works for you. But that you're cutting down your sleep because you want to make money, it's not adding up. Because mm. you're feeding one bank and then you're neglecting the other. Absolutely. And the interesting thing is you can only do business for as long as you're alive. alive so oh. see <laughs> your health as the fuel for your business. If mm. you run out of fuel, your business shuts down. Absolutely. So if you don't want your business to shut down, pay attention to your health. Absolutely. Be intentional about it. You, you want, I mean, there was a time in my life, really, I had to come up with a planner. Okay, I had to put at Excel where from 12 a.m. to 11.59 p.m., I, I put activities that I will be doing. Mm. I'm an early morning person, so right now I'm shutting down pretty much. By 10 p.m., 11 p.m., I'm entering that zone of sleep. You mm. see what I mean? So 4 a.m., I'm active again. I'm, you know. So if you know what works for you, being able to plan yourself around your peak periods, you know, and then dialing down you can find people that you can outsource things to maybe virtual assistants that can respond to your emails or something or leave um, an automated response i mean i reached out to a vendor over the weekend for cake my people i sent message ordinary hello it was automated response on whatsapp i just <laughs> moved on you know but then to say that there are systems that you can put in place to to take you know or act on your behalf don't think everything is you know needs to be done now cut mm. yourself some slack and please rest. Okay. You need that fuel to, to run your business, please. Okay, quickly. All right, so we do have some messages here. This one says, hi, guys. It is important to also talk about the employers and employees as work-life balance reasonably affects organization needs and that of its employees. That's from Chisum. And another one is a question from Hawa. It says, how do you balance working with cross-country team different time zones sometimes can be really overwhelming hmm. uh -huh. that's a good question i agree i agree now for those of us that have high ambitions and it's not bad it's very good i love to work i mean i have colleagues all over europe yeah we, we saw your profile <laughs> <laughs> so i have colleagues all over right one of the things i mean especially now in this new normal where thankfully we don't we don't waste time in traffic anymore we're working remotely and all that you know i try to ensure that i plan meetings in a way that is mutually agreeable except it is very urgent you can't fix a meeting so i have a colleague in russia whose, whose time zone is sometimes it's about six hours you know ahead of us you, I'm, I'm not going to expect, for instance, you know, that 
we're going to fix a meeting, you know, because it's our time, then it's going to, no, we have to mutually agree. But one thing we try to do, especially where I currently work, is we hold each other accountable to a work-life balance. And for the person who said, being mindful, I mean, at this point, talking to employers as well, because people are trying to live up to, you know, that perception of being very relevant at this time where there's a lot of remote working, you yeah. want to be visible, even though you're virtual, yeah. you know, by the impact of work you're doing. So you're showing up for every meeting, you're accepting all meeting invite clause, the one you don't have a serious agenda, you just show up, just let them know, I'm still working for this company, I'm still working for my salary, you know? So you need to ensure that you, you, you know, as employers, do not place undue demands on your people. Be reasonable, be fair. And you can only do that if as a line manager, you've empowered your people to do the work, you've equipped them with the tools required. You don't need to micromanage people and, you know, be meeting with them every time to, to be sure they are working. Mm. You don't need that, okay? Now, as an employee, I also like to tell people, the perception your boss had of you before COVID might be the reason why they are checking up on you every, time in, time every second. Do, do you see what I mean? Yeah. Because when you were even under their nose, you were not delivering like you should. <laughs> but now that you're outside of you know horizon, they need to check. So where yeah. are you now? Okay, so let's join you quickly. Join you. <laughs> join you. Like, oh my goodness. Have a we, you see what I mean? So be careful with that. So talking about multiple zones, yeah, um, it should be agreeable. And when you need to make a bed, because everyone has to sacrifice something. At some okay? point. It is, this period is not a period of convenience in any way. We are all trying to make sacrifices, all right? Know when you can bend and know when you want to ask them to cut you some slack as mm. well, okay? Absolutely. But just ensure that whether you're in meetings or not, deliver quality work. Thank you deliver so much, Mudukwe. You know what? We have run out of time, but we have to bring you back because... We didn't even scratch a lot of things and everybody's commending, you know, they are, yeah, they are loving you. I'd read the comments. Really well. Yeah. I'd read oh the comment, God. but you were not. <laughs> Everyone is commending you. you. All right. So, um, um Temi Tokwe, quickly, in a, in a nutshell, what, what do you think? How do you think we can manage it? Temi Tokwe? Oh my God. That, that wasn't clear. I didn't quite hear you. No, that. I said Temi. I'm talking to Temi. Temi, can you hear me? I don't think she can hear me. All right, so I think we'll just wrap up. Um, so, um, oh, absolutely. I picked up a whole lot of things. Modupe, you're such a fantastic guest. Absolutely. I love, I love, 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 love listening to you. So something you said that really stood out for me is when you multitask, you end up ineffective. Yeah. And I've noticed that like a lot of times I'm like, I'm a woman. It is in my blood or my mindset or whatever to, <laughs> <laughs> to multitask. And at the end of the day, I realize, oh, okay, so I'm doing this, I'm doing this. But somewhere along the line, I'm lost mm -hmm. in this. You so know? What do you say? And um, sorry, Sanzi, quickly. Okay. Bells. Oh, sugar. What's happening? The, the network is, is jammed, but Bells is asking a question. Please, how can individuals working in a media house strike a balance between work and personal life? Because I, 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 because working on weekends is a normal thing here. Okay, oh, sorry. Oh, <laughs> oh it, it, it's interesting for yeah, media, in media folks media because <laughs> you walk around the clock. Like, most I remember during the lockdown, there's like, no we, break. We would get stopped by the police when we we're going home, and they're like, Why are you not what? in your house? I'm like, But you watch TV every day, you listen to radio <laughs> so, every day. There's no break. <laughs> I, but we cannot go on again. Thank you so much, Motupe, for joining us. I mean, we have to bring you back for a, another very interesting conversation it's really been an insightful conversation this evening please watch a repeat broadcast of this episode tomorrow at 3 p.m and keep all the conversations going on all our social media platforms at we show africa or at plus tv africa as we continue to hear what you are saying now in case you missed today's quote don't get so busy making a life that you forget to make a uh, making a living that you forget to make a life that's from dolly Parton. and Montupe said something remember that your life is like fuel so if you run out of fuel, you're gone. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> try to stay, try to try to strike that balance. So tell me, tell me, are you back now? Say, ma'am. I think she's Thank there. You. Bye. All right, bye, guys. Bye. I'll see bye. you live on Friday for another great conversation. Right. Enjoy your the evening. Basically, live a coordinated life. <laughs> Absolutely. Wow, ladies, thank you so thank much. You so much.